It's very dangerous, Chuck, because a lot of what you're seeing as attacks on me, quite frankly, are attacks on science. So if you are trying to get at me, you're really attacking not only Dr. Anthony Fauci, you're attacking science. If you believe this, starting to crack. The almighty Fauci makes it clear. Criticize me, you're criticizing science, really? What if a doctor scientist criticizes you? Do they not like science, their own profession? With more on this, taking Dr. Anthony Fauci's side is Fauci apologist. Jesse Waters. <laughs> uh, he is a co-host of The Five, hosted yes. Waters World on Saturdays at 8, and author of the upcoming book, comes out on July 6th, How I Saved the World. So, Jesse? Yes. Uh, I did not know when he said this. I was on a shoot yesterday. Did you guys tackle this on The Five? We're going to tackle it tonight on The Five. So it came out after? It did. So, I mean, your thoughts. You're as outraged, and I, he's the most <laughs> overrated guy I've seen in my life. So... When you attack a liberal, this is what they do. They say, oh, you're attacking women. You're attacking me because I'm black. You're, 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 you're attacking the it's media. True. So they sure. try to then assume this grand identity. You're attacking science. No, we're not even attacking science. We're, we're criticizing you, Dr. Fauci, and he should be able to take the heat. I don't know if Chuck Todd followed up and said, well, Dr. Fauci, critics would say that you did have it wrong on masks. You did have it wrong on how much danger this pandemic would be. You did have it wrong to marginalize the Wuhan lab leak. You did have it wrong saying surfaces are a place you can catch the virus. You did have it wrong when it said you can catch it outside. So I don't know. Did he? I, it's more than likely if he had followed up like that. It would be in the news. But I'll give him benefit of the doubt. He is so defensive. He is also referring to himself. In the third person. <laughs> if we listen to the whole bite, I'm not going to uh, bore you with it. We got the gist of it. He actually refers to himself, if you insult Dr. Fauci, excuse me, aren't you Dr. Fauci? Well, as someone that likes to refer to himself in the third person, I'm not going to attack him <laughs> for that, Brian. But you're right. He, he so was you wrong. refer to your show as if you're not on it. <laughs> Waters World was looking to find that's out. That's right. That's right. And so, but, yeah, he was wrong on the lockdowns. Remember, he stuffed everybody inside when outside it wasn't spreading. And we got it all wrong. So we're not really criticizing science. We're just saying, listen, you got it wrong what a half dozen times let's 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 get it together and get it right so it doesn't happen again so I'll, since we are not scientists we could have been it's all who you know in that business uh, <laughs> dr peter mccullough is is cardiologist internist and epidemiologist and he was on with laura last night so your witness cut 13 well laura as a practicing doctor and as an editor of two major journals i can tell you you know we hear from lawyers that no person is above the law and in medicine, no doctor is above peer review. And what Americans really deserve to see over the last year is a team of doctors, preferably doctors who actually knew how to treat patients with COVID-19, knew how to rapidly interpret their literature and come up with the correct inferences. You know, the science changed over time. And every time there was a definitive statement, within a few days or a few weeks, there were new data coming out, particularly with respect to treatment. Listen, we noticed that as civilians. I think by the time though, his book comes out November 3rd, I know it's all about July 6th with you, <laughs> but as by the time his book comes out November 3rd, I think he's going to be totally disgraced. And I do I, too. Before, unlike Cuomo, he got it right after, he's going to get it before. I do too. And that advance, whatever he got, I, I hope it wasn't more than what I got for How I Saved the World, because that's a disgrace. Is it a very similar book? Yeah. Well, mine's longer. Ah, Mine's 300 is. pages. His he, is his, only 80. His is 80. Yeah, I mean, doctor, schmockter. Right. But you're right. So it, it wasn't just um, he was following the science and the science developed. He was getting emails from scientific leadership saying it looks like the sequence never mutated. It looks like this was manipulated. And then he got on a conference call with these scientists. They did a 180 and put out a paper and says, no, 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 it came from an animal. So he was actually – it was a scientific – conspiracy to then block scientific research into the truth. All right. I got to bring you to something else that's driving me nuts, what I have not been able to focus on. And that is I do fear uh, Joe, Joe Biden's foreign policy instincts and track record. There's two things I worry about. 
this climate change agenda that's destroying our energy, our fossil fuel, uh, which has been literally the engine of our economy, this hydro, uh, uh, the the uh, fracking that has allowed us to to ship and use natural gas, and of course the oil, the drilling that's been taking place. He's getting rid of all of it. Page six of the Wall Street Journal today. Not only is China not doing that, they say they're more moving away from whatever they agreed to on the Paris climate change. They said their focus is going to be on reviving their economy. That's what our focus should be. This is President Biden saying to an audience in England what his Joint Chiefs of Staff are telling him. Cut three. We must all commit to an ambitious climate action if we're going to prevent the worst impacts of climate change limiting global warming warming to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. We need the global, the global transition to clean energy technology. Okay. You know, I went over in the tank in the Pentagon when I first was elected Vice President, President, President Obama. The military sat us down and let us know what the greatest threat facing America, the greatest physical threats. This is not a joke. You know what the Joint Chiefs told us the greatest threat facing America was? Global warming. I, I'd fire them all. I would say, listen, is that true? Do you guys all? Okay, you're all gone. I don't believe Hand that. Hand in uniform. I don't yeah. believe you the Joint totally Chiefs told him that. I think he made it up. He better have. I think he made it up. That would be actually the good side of this story. And I thought the biggest threat was white supremacy. Right. You Wasn't that the straight. biggest threat? I forgot. And then last year it was Russia. Right. And then it was China. So, like, every other week it's a different threat. So... He, instead of, after the first hack, this is the message Vladimir Putin is sending us, and he's representing us. After the first hack, they were so scared about uh, retribution, they hit us again from the same country. This time, first they got our uh, our uh, oil and gas, then they got our meat. Right. All right. Then they said, you know, human rights is going to come up. Navalny's health matters to us. You know what they said? His organization is now illegal. There's no sign he's ever going to get out. They also arrested two more dissidents in the meantime. These are messages sent to Joe Biden to make him uncomfortable. This is a quote from their foreign minister in, uh, on the doorstep of their meeting uh, in Vienna in a few days. This is a disaster. Uh, Joe Biden has to defend big beef in the United States. Big beef and big oil. It's barbecue season, Brian. We need to be able to barbecue this beef. I would, if I were the president, right before I sat down with Vladimir Putin, I'd have the Defense Department launch a cyber attack on Rosneft, the big oil company right there. So he finds out during the meeting that the biggest oil company in Russia just got hacked. And then afterwards, I'd say... We're going to now re-up on all the military package to Ukraine. Big satellite imagery shipment. I, I, I'd lock in with all the tactical armaments because they have snipers in the east that are crushing the Ukrainians. And, and that's what I'd do. I'd sandwich Putin with those two deals, and I'd, I'd, I'd force him to say, next attack from Russian soil on America, I'm holding the Kremlin personally responsible. All right. Am I overstating when I say Kamala Harris had a disastrous two-day trip? <laughs> I think that's about right. I mean, totally but did you have any, with the issue. What were your expectations, though, Brian? I well, mean, did you really think she was going down there to solve problems? She's buying time. She doesn't want to go to the border. She doesn't want photographs of her with border agents at a wall praising Border Patrol agents. She wants to run for president one day. That'll just be an ad against her by someone like AOC that can say, you know, she's tough on immigrants. She's mean. She's nasty. She's pro-Border Patrol. She doesn't want those images out there. So she's doing she's tap dancing and avoiding the problem. All right. One hundred eighty thousand. Do You know what that number is? Yeah. That's, that's who have crossed the border in May. One hundred seventy three the month before. The problem is the, 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 the problem's getting worse in real time. It's not like, how did you handle that when you first kicked off and all those kids were coming across, dropped over a wall? It's actually still happening. What did we open up to it this week on Monday? A five-year-old walking around by herself in front of the wall, and then you see a border agent grabbing him. One of these images would have been the image we never forgot about Trump ingrained in our minds and our psyche forever. So she's got an unfolding problem, and I just see Henry Cuellar today called on Biden and Harris to let the local people, let the let the local residents understand that you care and come down to the border. Cuellar, I don't need to tell you, a Democrat. I think that I think they're going to have a hard time outrunning this problem. Well, you know, it gets really hot in the summer, so this migration pattern's naturally going to die down. So they'll just pat themselves on the back and claim that they fixed it. But it's just going to be just as bad next year because they're not changing any of the policies. I think they're going to get rocked in the midterms. Immigration's a hot button issue. You think People this mayor race? 
on I the I think board. it's a harbinger of things to come. People are upset about it, especially people in Texas. They're trying to turn Texas blue, right. Brian. Couple That's th- what they're trying to do. Right, but it's going the other way right now. And here's the other thing. Well, but but politically right now it's going the other way. But if you Long get term. hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants pouring into Texas and it's a, a lot of women, you know, they have babies. They're going to if they get amnesty, if they get asylum, they're going to vote Democrat. First year generation immigrants always vote Democrat. That's the game. They're going to suffer early uh, short term consequences. But long term, if they turn Texas blue, forget about it. You'll never have another Republican president. I went on Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.